Once upon a time, a star blew up in space, its pieces spread all over the galaxy. Some of them reached Earth and fell from the sky like rain. Around 4000 BC, the ancient Bulgarians came into contact with this metal. They made some artifacts from it, which are still in the Varna Museum. Egyptians made myths that this appealing metal is the flesh of gods. Last night, the gods granted me a vision. So they start making statues and burying their mummies with it. In 600 BC, ancient Lydians were the first who used gold to make coins from it. It was known as electrum. This led to the foundation for a new type of trade instead of just a barter system. Meanwhile, Indians have been adorning their idols with gold. This land saw a true golden age during the Gupta Empire. Later, greed for seizing gold brought colonial companies not just to India, but to many other parts of the world. Some estimates suggest that the British drained around $45 trillion in today's value from India. Like India, many nations lost their power and gold. The rich became poor, and the poor became rich due to their technological advancements, systemized government, and glorious greed. But it did not last for long. Two world wars broke out, and the empires began losing their grip because of battling each other. For many, it was a painful experience. All of them learned a lesson. Whenever someone tried to invade, they would leave not a single ounce of gold. The UK and USA were the safest places. Many nations preferred the Bank of England as their safe haven for gold. In this way, it became the custodian of gold. It approximately has 400,000 gold bars, totaling around 5,134 metric tons. Others thought that the Federal Reserve Bank of New York has the right vaults for their gold. Currently, it is the world's largest gold repository, with its vaults containing approximately 6,331 metric tons of gold, which equates to about 507,000 gold bars. This is just a small part, because as of February 2024, Approximately 212,582 metric tons of gold have been mined throughout human history. There are around 57,000 metric tons of gold reserves still underground. But how is gold made? And why is it getting more and more costly? Gold futures has hit multiple record highs this year. Since January 2nd, it's risen more than 14% in value. Subscribe and stick to the end of this video as we are delving deep into pure gold. In order to produce gold, the very first step is extracting its ore. There are different ways to obtain the gold ore. The simplest technique is panning, which has been employed since ancient times. This is why many ancient civilizations were rich in gold. Miners would collect sediment from riverbeds and streams, then wash it with water in a pan, allowing the heavier gold particles to settle at the bottom due to their high density, while lighter materials washed away. The Sumerians, around 2500 BCE, used sluice boxes to extract gold from alluvial deposits. This method involved directing water through a long, narrow box to separate gold from lighter materials. Today, Gold is extracted from almost every continent except Antarctica. But these days, hard rock mining is considered the best way to extract the gold ore, and there are many advanced machines for it. This blast hole drill was designed specifically for boring holes. It drills holes with diameters ranging from 6 to 18 inches. Holes are drilled in specific grid patterns to effectively fragment the rock. For a single big explosion, multiple holes are bored. A single bored hole could be as deep as 100 feet. To fill such a long hole, several tons of explosives are required. More than 100 such holes are created. 
the charges are carefully attached so that they can all explode simultaneously. If a charge fails to explode within a second, the explosive material gets wasted and the blasting crew has to remove it before the next operation can begin. Several minutes before the explosion, an alert can be heard in the open pit mine, signaling danger. When the blast is initiated in a gold open pit mine, a moment of raw power and calculated precision unfolds. The earth trembles as the carefully placed explosives ignite, releasing an orchestrated eruption of energy. As the dust begins to settle, the loosened material is ready for excavation. This machine makes it simpler for shovels and excavators to load the ore into large mining trucks. With this mighty electric shovel, a massive 140-ton mining truck can be filled in only a few passes. Each swing can take more than 13 cubic yards of material. One after another, each truck takes the mined material and transports it to a quarry at the very top. As these trucks navigate the labyrinthine paths of the mine, they often find themselves entangled in a web of queuing and congestion. The loading and dumping areas become bottlenecks, where trucks wait patiently, their engines humming in anticipation as precious minutes tick away. Torrential rains can turn the mine into a sea of mud, while fierce winds whip up dust storms that blind and disorient. It is in these moments that the true resilience of these machines and their operators is tested. A computer system monitors all the mining trucks, tracks each dump truck's route, and records operating hours. The mine trucks travel all day and night, and the excavators keep loading them up. Thousands of tons of ore are supplied by these man-made monsters. Gold is also extracted from deep underground mines. In fact, some of the deepest mines in the world are gold mines, and most of them are located in Africa. This is the inside view of Blanket Gold Mine, which is located in Zimbabwe. It is approximately half a mile deep below the surface. In 2019, this gold mine produced approximately 55,000 ounces of gold. The deeper you go into the mine, the more you feel the temperature. The temperature escalates by roughly 72 to 87 degrees Fahrenheit per mile. The deepest gold mine is located in South Africa, which is approximately 2.5 miles deep. There, the rock temperature at the lowest levels of the mine can reach up to 151 degrees Fahrenheit. In underground mining, miners first locate gold-rich ore deep beneath the Earth's surface, then dig tunnels or vertical shafts to reach it. They drill holes into the rock, blast it with explosives to break it apart, and collect the shattered ore using machinery or carts. The ore is transported to the surface via elevators or conveyors, where it's crushed into powder and treated with chemicals to extract the gold. To keep miners safe, tunnels are reinforced with steel or concrete, and cooling systems battle intense heat while ventilation pumps in fresh air, turning a dangerous, fiery underworld into a controlled hunt for buried treasure. This is where the truck unloads its ore. First, a jaw crusher breaks down the ore into smaller pieces, typically around six to 10 inches in size. The smaller pieces are further reduced in size using cone crushers or impact crushers, producing fragments that are usually less than one inch in diameter. Next, the crushed ore is transferred to a ball mill. The ball milling contains heavy steel balls, which continuously crush the ore. Inside the mill, the ore is mixed with water, which creates slurry. The first stage ball mill is typically connected with a double screw classifier. The ground ore is fed into the double screw classifier, which returns the large particles to the crushing drum while transferring the overflow to the slurry tank. The slurry is inspected before it goes into the second stage grinding mill. 
Then, the second stage ball mill further reduces the particle size of the ore to achieve optimal liberation of gold particles from the surrounding minerals. In the second stage grinding of gold ore, a cyclone is used as part of a closed circuit milling system to classify particles by size and density. The finer particles exit the top of the cyclone and proceed to the next stage of processing, such as leaching. The finer material or slurry that is obtained from second stage grinding is called overflow pulp. For further processing, it needs to be thickened. Flocculants are introduced to the slurry in the thickeners. They are chemical agents that combine small particles into larger flocks. The thickener's overflow is recycled in the water recycling tank while the underflow is sent to the mixing tank. At the same time, lime and sodium cyanide are injected into the mixing tank, respectively. This is the primary process for gold extraction. Cyanide is one of just a few chemicals that can dissolve gold. Small carbon chips are then added to the solution to trap the gold and separate it from the other contaminants. Carbon granules used in certain gold mines are made from discarded coconut shells. The carbon is recycled after the gold has been redesigned via a process known as elution. The gold solution is then electrolyzed. It is an electrochemical process in which current deposits gold on the negative electrode. The cathode would explode if placed in the smelter while wet. Therefore, it is 100% dried. Finally, the dry gold cake enters the furnace to be smelted into pure metal. Because molten gold is the heaviest metal, a chemical flux is used to aid in its separation it sank to the bottom. So the priceless liquid is dumped. The gold is the last to go. Thus only the top vessel gets molten gold, while all the remaining substance is just slag. The workers who pour molten gold into ingots are very qualified. The flame changes color when gold is present, indicating its source. The furnace has virtually finished producing precious gold, and each ingot, known as an ad or a bar, is often purer than 18 carats and valued more than a million dollars. It's valuable and rare. All of the 171,000 tons of gold ever mined is still there today. It would fit within a cube with sides of just 20 meters. The Dore bar is given a final clean and polish, and there is one more task to do. Each bar is branded with a unique number and barcode, and a tiny sample is collected to test for purity. Today, gold is ethically produced by highly experienced workers who adhere to strict standards. The gold from the mine is flown out to be refined further. Around half of it will be used to manufacture jewelry, with the remainder held as investment-grade bars and coins or incorporated into technology critical to living in the 21st century. Gold is not always acquired in a proper or controlled manner. Due to economic problems and growing global gold prices, illegal gold mining has become a major problem in Africa. These unregulated practices, which are known as Galamzi in Ghana or Zama Zamas in South Africa, have a devastating effect on the ecosystem. Because gold is extracted using hazardous chemicals like cyanide and mercury, they cause deforestation, soil erosion, and serious water contamination. Communities in impacted areas must contend with tainted water sources and degraded farmlands as a result of this environmental degradation, which also jeopardizes biodiversity and threatens agriculture and food security. Gold has been more than just a metal. It has been a catalyst for change, innovation, and ambition throughout human history. From ancient civilizations that revered it as a divine symbol to modern economies that rely on its stability, gold has shaped societies in profound ways. With that, we end this video. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we see you next time.